All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Atticus Live, where we drink beer and talk about boats. Today, we are going to be talking about the realities of living aboard a small blue water sailboat. Let's get right on into it. All right, guys, so what's going on? I am Jordan. And I'm Desiree. And uh, we are newbie cruisers, so as always, take everything that we have to say with a grain of salt. We do think that we've learned a lot in our experiences so far, so we want to share that stuff with you guys today. Yep, so we've gotten a lot of questions from cruisers or also uh, people who want to get into the cruising lifestyle. So um, this, live st this live stream is dedicated to people who are thinking about hopping into the cruising lifestyle. Um, and also, if you're a cruiser out there and you just wanted to hop online and shed some light on your experiences, we are also here to learn. So um, please feel free to share any tips and tricks that you know uh, to help us become better cruisers. Um, all right, so Jordan is gonna kick things off with talking about, um, here I can turn it off, about the uh, champagne cruising oh. on a beer budget philosophy. That's right. So. Um Thank you, Desiree. Sorry, we're trying to silence the phone. Uh, first of all, very exciting. This is our first live stream actually on Atticus. So yes. we are on board Woo! a small budget blue water sailboat. So <laughs> welcome, welcome. And this is the first time we've realized our lighting at night is probably not optimal. So we've had to jerry rig a crazy lighting studio here. So we're a couple minutes late and that's why. Yeah, and it's a little hot. It's risky, it's hot. A little hot in here. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so. Um, first of all, everything that I'm going to be talking about today, everything that we're going to be talking about today is sort of dependent on our, I guess you could call it value system or the way that we look at cruising. And uh, that comes from a phrase that the Lynn and Larry Party coined, which was uh, from their book Cost Conscious Cruiser. And as you can see there, the subtitle is Champagne Cruising on a Beer Budget. And I love that phrase, and that is sort of the motto that Desiree and I have taken for our style of cruising. The whole point is to, with uh, you know, the minimal amount of money necessary, like actually get into the places where you can experience the same things as people with a whole bunch of money. Um, and am I going to talk about my anecdote? Uh, I think you're talking about the triangle. But before we do, what's up, Stargate Pioneer? Thanks for joining us. Hey, Ice Spock. Yeah, you're back. You made hey. it. It's late for you guys. How's it going, big guy? Sailing SB Someday. Tom McFarland. Thomas Golan, all the way from <laughs> Germany. Josh Burns. Bill, you didn't miss anything. You're, <laughs> you're in this. Uh, Steve Wicht, hey. Uh, Bake sale, nice. <laughs> and Bill Connolly, thanks for joining us. Um, okay, so, and I, I did wanna say one anecdote. So one of the things that got me on this topic today, uh, especially of this concept of, um, of you know, sh champagne cruising on a beer budget, is when we both worked on super yachts, this is actually before I met Desiree, but I remember I was on a charter boat, I was on a, a big, like, you know, 300 foot big super yacht, and we were in Sardinia, and I remember it was just a beautiful area. It was a national park. There's these huge, like, stone islands all over the place that would have been fun to explore and climb and, and check out. But the guests were just laying around, sunbathing, and drinking all day long. And I just couldn't help but think that that's exactly what... They could do that in my backyard at home. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to be somewhere interesting to do those things. And so that's when I started really wanting to... You know cruise and, and get my own boat and see if I couldn't like go to places like that and actually take advantage of being there and to me that's the whole concept and philosophy behind champagne cruising on a beer budget is you just don't need that much money to make it happen not as much as you might think mm -hmm. and um, uh, we're gonna do things a little bit differently in our previous live streams we've kind of had a topic that we're gonna talk about pound through them and then open up the floor for discussion um, but we wanted today to be more interactive so uh, just keep your questions, comments, anecdotes coming towards us, and we'll try to, um, when they're relevant, just dive right into them. So, okay. again, hey, SV Outcasts. Rob S. is Rob. in the house. Nice. What's up, buddy? Awesome. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go into this real briefly. Sorry, we haven't even started to touch on the topic yet, but this is what I call the uh, boat triangle of really getting to understand how things work on boats. That's, that's not really what it's called, but okay. So the triangle that you're looking at, like talks about how the, the ratio between seaworthiness, comfort and performance. And the concept is, is once you 
change or alter the amount that of one of those aspects that you put into a boat, you're going to alter one of the other aspects as well. So, for instance, um, with with Atticus, um, I put a little like a darker triangle here to show you in a lot of ways how Atticus was designed. Um, comfort was minimized, performance was minimized a little bit, and seaworthiness was increased uh, about as much as it could be increased. Um, and so that's Atticus's layout. Minimal comfort, decent performance, and really high on the seaworthiness uh, side of things. So I just wanted to show you guys that today because as we talk about what it's like living on a small sailboat, we wanna make sure that you guys understand that a lot of what we're gonna say is particular to Atticus because of that minimal comfort aspect and, and maximum uh, optimization for seaworthiness. If you're on a small boat that's optimized for comfort, you're probably going to have different issues than us. So yeah. just so you guys have that understanding. Like Hans Christians and West Sails, they're only three feet bigger than our boat, but they're huge inside. They've got a wrap around place to eat. They've got a whole like separate, sorry, sleeping berth uh, for guests. And it's, it's just like a palace down below, but Atticus yeah. is not really like that. Uh, in fact, we see a lot of like 27 foot boats that actually look a lot more spacious on the interior because they're more similar to the build of Atticus. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of our viewers sent us a picture of a, uh, I think it's called a vert, oh, I forgot what it was called, but it was a 25 foot uh, classic boat and man the pictures were awesome and again I told him like you have more counter space on your 27 foot boat than we do on Atticus. Um, real quick Frederick was asking what am I drinking um, and my preferred preferred drink is red wine but we ran out <laughs> so I'm just doing tonic water with um, lime and orange and then just a splash of rum. Yeah. So that's you should make dream. that a tropical tornado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the blues somewhere. Anyway, Eddie Spaghetti, thanks for coming in. Rob S is saying, or Eddie, love it when you hop in, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, Rob S is asking about ballast ratio. Yes, ballast ratio would enter into if you were to start to break down why a boat is seaworthy. Ballast ratio would enter into that discussion, in my opinion. But Rob, let me know what you think, buddy. That. Today we really want to create a conversation, so I'd love to know your opinions on ballast ratios and how that enters into everything. Okay, and then also we wanted to thank Dave for being our moderator tonight. You can see him in the live chat with a little tool next to him. So he's going to be helping us kind of funnel in questions if we miss them or shout outs. Um, so thank you so much, Dave, for moderating again. Uh, you've been amazing, doing a great job. We really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are interested in becoming a moderator, we're thinking about maybe switching up the times, going a little bit later, or maybe trying for a live stream on the weekend. Um, if you're at all interested in becoming a moderator, please send me a message on our Facebook page and we'll make you an honorary patron. Um, and then you can join our Facebook hangout group where we kind of talk about behind the scenes Atticus. And we do like uh, probably like two or three live streams a week there based on the projects we're doing. So, mm -hmm. all right, so let's move into uh, what, what we're here to talk about, which is a lifestyle of living on a small sailboat. Oh yes. <laughs> Let's so, talk. Yeah, so let's. The first thing we wanted to talk about was water consumption, uh, specifically uh, bathing. So, um, do you? For those of you guys who live on a boat, uh, how do you shower and keep clean while you're cruising? And uh, while you're answering that question, Jordan's going to tell us about uh, when we're at anchor, how we do it. Okay. So yeah. So we're talking about water consumption is a big deal aboard a small boat dealing managing your water consumption the first element we're talking about is bathing when we're at anchor um, we use a uh, inflatable it's not inf it's a pressurized shower do you have it yeah we've got yeah. so the helios this is our favorite one of our favorite items that we have on board um, it is a shower that works similar to like a solar shower, except that most solar like camping showers are completely gravity fed, which is fine. But the other problem is that the nozzle is almost always attached to the bottom of the bag. And when you're trying to conserve water and you like soap up your whole body, if you're trying to get the soap off of like your feet and the nozzle is at your head, like you end up using way too much water to actually, you know, rinse the lower part of your body off. 
So what we love about this is it's got a r relatively long hose. Um, and then instead of being gravity fed, it is, uh, you pressurize it using a foot pump. And it all fits in this tiny little thing. And if I can get it out. It takes me like 20 minutes to put it in there. <laughs> and I'm just gonna destroy that work uh, all in well, one fell swoop. While Jordan's getting that ready. Um, John Young asked, oh no, sorry. Um, Frederick Rourke, nice last name, asked, uh, did you guys do any racing on the big yachts? And we were both working on motor yachts, um, mostly because they paid more. Uh, the sailing yachts, the salary was a lot less and the charter guests wouldn't really tip as much. So we were both in yachting to make money for the dream of sailing around the world um, or traveling around the world. Um, so no, we didn't do any racing on yachts. Yeah. Sadly, would have loved to. Mm. So just to give you a basic idea, this is where the water goes right here. It's dark so that it warms up during the day. And then the other cool thing is there, the top is actually see-through um, plastic so that the sunlight really penetrates in the middle of the day to warm up the water. Um, and then here's your nozzle and, and little uh, uh, sprayer with the hose. And then this is actually what you inflate with your foot. So this is this really nice little pouch that you just kind of put your pressure on with your foot. So anyway, this thing is awesome. It allows you to conserve water because you can apply the water to any part of your body specifically uh, while kind of like slowly pumping on it. So the Helio shower, we've got a link to this in the description. So if any of you guys are in need of a good showering solution uh, and you need to do it, do so while conserving water, that's a great solution. Yeah, and um, we'll get to this question a little bit later, but Tom, Tom McFarland asks, do you add bleach to your tanks? Um, and yes, we do, and we'll get into that. And even when we're um, showering with this guy, because we leave it on deck and like when we're filling up uh, in places like Cuba where the water has some, sometimes has some like nasty particles in it, we put a little bit of bleach in there also. Um, you, we've also heard you can use vinegar if you're gonna be like showering with it because it's less caustic to your skin. Um, but then you'll smell a little bit like vinegar, so yeah. it's up to you. So I'm just gonna describe to you the process that we go through when we're keeping clean while living at anchor. Um, so we actually shower in the cockpit. Um, now, we don't just simply you know, rinse, soap up, and then rinse because we wanna conserve as much water as possible. So at anchor, we'll actually jump into the sea, come out, lather up, soap up, jump back into the sea, come back out onto the boat, and then just rinse the salt off. So we allow the soap to deal with all, you know, get ourselves not greasy anymore, and then uh, and then use the fresh water to simply rinse off the salt water. Um, it, you're you're never like 100% salt free using that method, but it's the kind of thing where you're comfortable. Like you feel comfortable when you go to bed. You don't smell. That's and that's the goal, right? <laughs> like I'm, I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Um, Eddie Spaghetti was saying he used a bug sprayer from Home Depot, and we have heard mm. that that's a good system. Yeah. Um, I think by the time we bought the Helios, we were like out of the country or something, so we that wasn't an option for us. But we've heard that works well. What do yeah. you think of it? Yeah, Eddie, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. I've heard the same thing. Bug sprayers work great. The one thing I would say in in uh, defense of the, uh, what do you call it, Helios, mm -hmm. is that, as you saw, it compacts really small. So it, it collapses. Whereas a bug sprayer, it doesn't collapse. And if you're on a small boat like ours, like that much space, mm -hmm. like that much volume of storage area is sacred. <laughs> so the the gain that we get from from space saving is, is really uh, important for us. Mm -hmm. um, so then, so we jump into the sea, come out, and then rinse off. Something else that we've discovered is that if we went snorkeling that day, and we've got a bunch of gear that we want, or like spear fishing, there's all you've got tons of gear that you want to rinse off after a day of spear fishing, and it's really hard. Like if you're out there, like when we were in Cuba, and it was hard to find wa fresh water. Like it was actually like almost breaking my heart to use up fresh water just to rinse off my spear gun or, or fins. So we started doing is when we took showers in the cockpit, we would clog the scuppers in the cockpit, in the cockpit sole, 
and then put all of our gear that needed to get rinsed in the cockpit sole. That way, as we both showered, it would fill up with mostly fresh water. And then I'm going to ask a, yeah. when Paul Higgins says about how much water will one of y'all use to rinse off? That's a good question. Huh, that's an interesting question. We, I actually don't know. The, the metric that we use for how much water we're using is how much water per person per day. Or how many times we fill up this guy. That's kind of how we know. Yeah, and when we're conserving, we do one of those for both of us maximum, right? Oh, when we're trying to one, conserve. In one rinse off, I would say, I would say this just for rinsing off um, could could do four showers. Yeah, and how, how what's the capacity? We got the smaller one. I wish we kind of would have gotten the bigger one. Um, mm. But there's a link to it in the description below. So yeah. I think it tells you exactly how many liters it is. But to be honest, that's something we could get better at. A lot of cruisers actually get their water consumption down to like a perfect equation. So like they measure how much tea they, tea they sorry, how much water they use for their tea and their coffee and their drinking and then their showers. Uh, we haven't totally done that yet, but it'd be it'd be interesting to do that going forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just to kind of answer your question though, Paul, um, we plan on using a, a gallon and a half per person per day, um, roughly, when we're really trying to skimp, maybe two gallons per person per day. Mm -hmm. And the tropics has a lot to do with that. If it's summer, you're drinking way more water than if it's like a, you know a nice, comfortable 70 some odd degrees. Hmm. Um, and Dallas Bob says he uses a two gallon bug sprayer with a, with sink sprayer. Um, it's okay, but I'd like to find a better way. Maybe the Helios would be a good option. We really yeah. like it. Um, we've had it for, we've used it active, we use it actively for about a year, but then we realized um, now that we're at a dock, we realize we should pack it up, oil it up and put it away so that we're, we're using the facilities here. Um, so I, I'd imagine the lifespan of this thing is at, is at least a couple of years. Um, so yeah, for anyone who's had it longer, let us know if you, if you know anything about when it starts degrading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, my buddy Billy was just on asking about what was the name of that house in lot in Fort Lauderdale that we lived in is my old roommate. What's up, Billy? How you doing? Uh -huh. buddy? Hey, Colin. Thank Thanks, you very Colin. much, buddy. We really appreciate that. You're awesome. But anyway, Billy, I'll have to remember that it was, you know, what's crazy, Billy, is the crew house that you and I met in. Desiree stayed in that crew house yeah. before we met each other. Yeah, when we were visiting Fort Lauderdale for some reason, I was like, ooh, I want to show you my crew house. And he's like, ooh, I'll show you mine too. And then we rolled up to the same crew house and we're like, it yeah. was that one. <laughs> yeah, but do you remember the name of it? What, what, uh, no, it was like Neptune, Neptune Group. Neptune Group called I it. I don't I can't remember. remember. Yeah. All right, let's move on to um, bathing when we're underway. And this will be a real quick explanation. Sure. And real quick though, before I, I do want to say one other aspect of bathing at anchor is and this is something that I didn't think about before we started cruising but it when it's hot out Desiree and I are in and out of the, the sea like five to six times a day like we're literally like that is our main method of like keeping cool is jumping into the ocean yeah. so much so that I've actually started having a small problem with like swimmers ear so I want to make sure that I bring some sort of drops with us next time that we leave Mexico uh, to, to counteract getting swimmers here, just being in the salt water so much. Um, but our process of keeping clean underway is still developing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of tough, like when you're underway, and I, I'd love to know what you guys do, like when you're, if you're doing passages or what you've heard of people doing to keep clean. Mm -hmm. um, what I've started doing is just doing like a bucket shower with salt water and then rinsing off with fresh water and trying to do that at least once a day. If it's hot, what I'll do is I'll do multiple bucket showers and then have like one towel that's like a salty towel. And so I'll just like, I'll towel off without rinsing in fresh water. And then like before, just before my watch is up and I'm gonna go try and sleep, I'll rinse off with fresh water. Cause like you just can't justify using fresh water to keep cool. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And this is a really cool bucket. Probably one of my favorite things on the boat. It's just a fabric bucket. Um, it's a 10 gallon um, collapsible bucket. And I would have gotten like the 16 gallon bucket or maybe the small one and the big one. We use it for everything, for cleaning. This is what Jordan uses when we're underway mm. and he's getting water when we're sailing. 
and we love it. Real quick, bake sale. Thanks for that uh, that that advice. Rubbing alcohol can help evaporate oh, the water in your ear. Cool. We'll have to start doing that. Very cool. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Razor says, how do you collect water? That's a good question. And to be honest, we haven't really done much water collection um, in our cruising so far. Um, and then as far as staying clean while we're while we're underway my kind of philosophy is a little bit lazy like our biggest passage was maybe like two and a half straight days so i'm just like so like kind of seasick and groggy when i'm underway that like i don't even like bring hygiene into the equation <laughs> which you might notice in our videos <laughs> i start getting real nappy um but I, I imagine once we go on longer passages, I'll just have to suck it up and start sh showering like daily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways. But um, Ashley's here. How are you doing, Ashley? Oh, hey, Ashley. Ashley also has the same shower that we have. So that was pretty cool. All right. Um, all right let's talk about... Um, all right. And so basically right now we're at a dock. So, um, But the marina that we're at doesn't have shower facilities. So we just used our hose, that which we brought with us from Key West. Um, we have one like heavy duty hose. And then we have a collapsible hose also that we started using recently. And we really like because it's lightweight and it folds up easily. Um, so yeah, we'll just sit there and hose off. And then we'll jump in the water every Every day and the same process except we have more fresh water um, and then I'll also use this I've been using this recently to get a hot shower I'll just heat up some water on the stove to like about here and then fill up the rest with cold water and then I'll just kind of use a cup and shower on the dock with all the fishermen yeah. and tourists driving by and waving at me it, she's definitely a popular person yeah. well especially <laughs> now the bar like the, the where we used to do the live streams that was at the bar that was not open here at the dock that we stay at but now it's open and that's why we're not doing live streams there and so people at the bar really enjoy watching Desiree shower <laughs> but uh, it, it, it is interesting because this is something oh do you want to talk about how like cool it is that we yeah so that's here? what we're talking about now um but uh, real quick um Pete Allen hey man what's up he always calls you Casanova <laughs> um and I do have a question for you guys out there who are watching um do you have any recommendations for soap that work well in salt water and you have you found a big difference in soaps um I will say that for us I haven't really found a drastic difference between some soaps and other um, and we're somewhat lazy about using like eco-friendly um, products because um, they it's, they're hard. No, it, they're hard to find, and Sorry. they're also expensive here. <laughs> so I love Dr. Bronner's more than anything. Uh, we have like one sacred little lavender Dr. Bronner's, um, but other than that, we kind of use the same products that we use in the states. And for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with this discussion, the uh, a lot of people say that there are some soaps that actually sud up more in salt water than others. And that you, you'll notice if you ever try this, if you're trying to soap something up in salt water, you get a lot less of that foamy, suddy effect, which has a lot to do with the cleaning effect of the soap. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, basically what we're going to talk about, uh, just to kind of wrap up the whole bathing issue is, um, you know, overall we were talking about, you know, it is an inconvenience to shower, which is why, especially as it's been getting colder, I've been getting like progressively dirtier. Right now I'm like pretty greasy. I haven't showered in like three days. Um, <laughs> but that's just like because I'm kind of lazy and it's... She's just kind of a <laughs> disgusting <person>. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a process. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, Ashley, Ashley. Thank you. That's really awesome. Cheers. Cheers, Ashley. <laughs> you are drink. You are the man slash woman. <laughs> Anyways, um, but what's really cool about it is we're forced to kind of swim every day um, and enjoy the outdoors and kind of like take a step back and we usually try to shower or like jump in the water at the at sunset time. So, you know, we see a bunch of people who live around us and they never go in the water. And so it's kind of cool for us to be like, you know what, we're kind of forced to be in nature a lot more because we don't have a shower on board. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like just the sunsets that I've seen showering are just incredible. You know, I mean, literally just at the end of the day, I'm tired, I'm beat, I just wanna like have a drink and relax. And, but because of the smallness of our living situation and the minimalistic aspect of it, I'm forced to take a shower outside watching the sunset. And like sometimes it's absolutely beautiful and I wouldn't be out there otherwise. So with all of these inconveniences, they all, almost everything we're gonna talk about today there's like 
there's like an aspect of it that's inconvenient, a little bit annoying, but then there's also, because we're forced to get into that situation, there's there's aspects of it that are really cool, mm -hmm. really like, they, they, they cause you to have a healthier, more interesting lifestyle all the time. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, <laughs> Mahala Lewis says, are you able to receive mail? Mahala instantly wants to send you soap. It'd be awesome to receive some soap. Billy, <laughs> I'll give you our address, buddy. You, you need to come visit us, that's why. You and Mahala gotta come visit. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hey, Dave, thanks oh, for joining us. Anne's Dave here. Dri Anne, drive safe, though. you got to drive <laughs> Aww, safe. Hey, Anne. <laughs> but we're v I'm very happy you're here. Thanks for coming. And then Rob S. said, we liked Leggett's soap. Um, can be used for both body and hair. Interesting. Nice. Oh, I'm and, big on both body and, and baby hair. wipes. Good point. Paul Novak, like, I've just gotten really into baby wipes because I'm so dirty. So Jordan's like, have you showered today? And I'm like, mm-hmm. And I'll go into the bath and be like... So clean. <laughs> so I love baby wipes, but they do take up a lot of space and we don't have much room on board. So that's one of our, that's kind of like our biggest limitation. Um, cool. So let's go on to laundry. Well, I guess I'll, the last thing I'll say is like. Oh, I, for, I totally forgot that I have, oh my gosh. What? Let's go on to, no, water consumption. Oh, sorry, okay. I forgot about these graphics. All right, so now we're going on to laundry. So to be honest, again, like I haven't really figured out the best way to do laundry. I have my one little bucket and I had another one that was bigger, but it broke. Um, <laughs> and so um, I did my laundry in salt water and then I was using very, very minimal fresh water to kind of soak everything and get the salt water out. And I spend like an, like a long time rinsing everything out. And I also have tendonitis problems in both of my wrists. So like wringing them out is really difficult for me. So, wow. <laughs> uh, anyways, it just like didn't turn out very well. So definitely open for laundry tips. Um, since we've been in Mexico, we found that it's actually pretty cheap to get our um, laundry done here in town. So I'll just put all of our laundry into my hiking book bag and then like throw in a, a little mesh bag for them to use once they're there and it costs I think it's like 80 pesos for like four kilograms of of um of clothes so pretty affordable yeah. um and then can, uh -huh. can I interrupt yeah you sure sure so Rob S first of all for all of you regular viewers I just asked politely if I can interrupt her <laughs> that was a that was a step forward. I'm gonna get some more drink later. Yeah, can you grab me a beer too? Yeah. Um, so Rob S, Rob S, what's up, buddy? Was asking specifically. He said we he had heard that we have a rain collection system. Could we elaborate on how we approach that? So Rob, I'm gonna just real quick tell you what our plan is. Um, the we don't have a like. I'm not very happy with our rain collection system, but what it is is we have bulwarks that drain on either side of the deck to a single scupper. So there's one scupper on the starboard side, one scupper on the port side at the lowest point. Um, besides that, the bulwarks are totally closed off. They don't let water off the deck. Um, so our water inlet, a little cap for our water inlet, is on the port side adjacent the scupper. So it's very close to the lowest point on the deck. Um, sorry about that. And so what our like water catchment uh, strategy is, is to just plug the scupper and then open the, uh, the inlet cap to let whatever water collects on that port side of the deck to drain into the, uh, into the inlet. That requires that your decks are relatively clean. Um, so that's one of our jobs while we're underway, in fact, is... And you we, know, we haven't tried this yet, so this is our proposed uh, strategy. Well, that's true. We actually haven't been, re we haven't resorted to it in the sense that we've never been so far been low on water and had like a tremendous amount of rain um, enough to justify starting this process. So anyway, that that is sort of like the, oh shit, you've run out of water. Now you need more sort of how we would deal with, with that situation. And back to laundry, uh, Anne Aberdeen says there are buckets with plungers just for boaters. Um, and I have seen that. Um, what are you talking about? Oh, I was just saying hello, Amateur Sailor Challenge. Thank you for oh, yeah, hey, nice to popping see you guys. on board. Woo exciting. Um, but yeah, that's something we should consider also. We'll have to just like make a list of 
things we need to improve on, which is a lot. <laughs> Dave, it's right here. Don't worry. I got I got beer. Trust me, <laughs> everyone would know about it. Hey, cheers, everybody. If you guys are drinking cheers. beer tonight, then cheers. Oh, and actually, um, I had my alarm clock set for 530 because we wanted to do a Atticus Chug today. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. So for the Atticus Chug. Ooh, for the comment of the week goes to Johnson, Wisconsin. He said, one never needs an excuse for an 80s theme. Another awesome video. Thanks. Cheers. We both agree. When Cheers, <laughs> dude. When Jordan first showed me the concept of the 80s video, I was a little bit skeptical, but uh, I think it turned out well. Good job, yeah. Ben. <laughs> yeah. I Spock, yes, I am still drinking Soul, but uh, I don't know. It's just it's just a great light beer, Very, man. And it's, the price is right. <laughs> the price is right. Yeah. All right. So, um, second of all, we had this awesome caption this contest going on a couple weeks ago. I fell behind because I had to go home to the States for a funeral. Can you bring up those photos? Um, Which ones? The caption this. Oh, yes. Um, and so, long story short, we've got these two caption this winners, but I can't figure out which one I like more. So can you guys vote now um, and let us know which ones you like better? If you like the one that says, let's live on a sailboat, he said. It will be so romantic, he said. Um, go ahead and type romance, and then if you like, if you can still sa stand, you can still sand, then type in the word sand, and we'll try to tally up the winners tonight. <laughs> Okay, so and just for you guys that that didn't really catch that, the the we did a caption this contest on our Facebook page. So if you totally missed that, that's why. So we've got these two photos with captions that two different people had submitted, and they are the finalists. So you guys are here to decide. So type romance. Oops. Type. Uh -oh, looks like romance is winning. Type romance or sand. <laughs> and uh, Dave our moderator who it, it has no horse in this in this race <laughs> except for the fact that he is one of the finalists will tally up all of the uh all of the votes but dave i trust your i i think you're a man of uh of moral continuity so <laughs> I, i'm not worried all right and then the last thing we wanted to chug to was our new patrons this week go ahead and bring that up Thanks to Mark Colchin, Justin Lariu, I'm so bad with names, and Rohan Samarawira. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're Cheers, awesome. guys. <laughs> All right. You guys are really awesome. You're <laughs> literally changing our lives. So I hope you guys, I hope you guys uh, understand that. Thank you very much. All right. So we got two questions, and then we'll hop into our next subject. So the Jess Hart 05 asks, "Where are you two from?" And I am kind of. Uh, I grew up moving around a lot. My parents now live in Florida. That's where I've got a lot of my stuff. <laughs> Jordan? That's a good point. Where is your stuff? Yeah. That's almost like Here in for someone that lives traveling, where is your stuff is a really good way of answering it. <laughs> my stuff is in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I actually grew up in California. So my parents moved to Pittsburgh uh, after I came of age. Um, a lot of people say that's an interesting, like, direction normally it's the other way tell me about it we'll talk about it one of these days okay all right and then we're going to talk real quickly about washing dishes uh, as it relates to water consumption hey no job sorry hey no, no job you're back. Here. Yeah. um and uh this is a trick that we learned from the boat galley if you guys are uh new to cruising and you haven't heard about the boat galley the cookbook uh it's a book and a website and she creates all these awesome hacks and tips for living on a sailboat and she taught it we found this little cool trick um, to buy a um, water bottle uh, spray with a spray nozzle so that when we're trying to conserve water, we can wash our dishes, dishes with salt water, but then when we're going to get the soap off them, we actually just spray with this little water bottle. And we really only use about this much for each, you know, like dining setting. Uh, whereas when we're just like freely pumping uh, the, um, oh gosh, that has so many Fresh water. bad, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, when we're just, getting the fresh water coming in <laughs> otherwise we waste a lot of water so um yeah that's all i'll say about dishes except that in a, in our small teeny boat it takes a lot more time than doing dishes ashore um and it takes about half of our living space <laughs> dude this is the best captain jack 69 uh-huh you, you get you in the co the comment of the live stream so far shower together while doing dishes 
conserve. Nice. Yeah, over <laughs> I, your snorkel gear. <laughs> I, yeah, over your snorkel gear. That is amazing. That's a good Well point. done, Captain Jack. That's great. Oh. Yeah, what and and if you do, you guys have any tips for washing dishes while you're um, out at anchor or otherwise? Also, have you found any soaps that work better? We've again heard that like Dawn works better than like Joy. Um, we're using a, a Mexican product which works pretty well, so we haven't really found one way or another. Yeah. Um, and just fi one final thing I was going to say is that for those of you that what Desiree was talking about, how we do our dishes, we actually have a faucet, a second faucet that connects directly to salt water, to the ocean. So we've got a foot pump for fresh water that comes out of one faucet, and we've got a foot pump for salt water that comes out of another faucet. So we're able to switch uh, which we use in the sink at any given moment. Cool, all right, um, let's see. All right, so let's move on to drinking water, but actually in the same topic, somebody, Bake Sale was asking, what do you think about removing the bilge tank, use a composting head, and replace the tank with an additional water tank? Well, I, I hear you. Um, there's a couple of things about that. First of all, a composting head is not legal in states such as Florida. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm saying composting heads should be the most legal thing on any boat anywhere. But if you're going to be in and out of Florida much, you have to have an either a, 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 a literal processing plant, like you have to be able to process <laughs> your own... Someone wants to see you with that Black wire. Yeah. I didn't. You look I didn't, didn't want to do this, <laughs> just in case there were any ladies watching. Yeah. <laughs> Shield your eyes, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> the glaring hands. I, did, I didn't want this to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so so composting toilets are illegal in Florida. I, I'm not sure how many other states they're illegal in. And then also, I would mm. love to replace our bilge area with a water tank, but our bilge area is already an integrated water tank which has been abandoned by the previous owners and that is a massive project that i'm going to undertake at some point but not right now <laughs> this is a great question simon uh, henman says how did you find the water quality in marinas is it as bad as they say and wouldn't it be suitable for washing hmm. uh, that's a great question and our experience was in cuba and then and here. in mexico um, and the, Cu the Cuban water, especially when we were like remotely sailing, we actually got our fresh potable water from a like... Not potable. Po well, they called it potable. They called it potable. <laughs> Potable, yeah. And I was like, are you sure you can drink this? And they're like, si, si, si. But it was like literally water that they had filled their bilge with um, to go from the mainland to this like resort island. And, and, and they being the tourist ferry. Mm -hmm. So the tourist ferry, as it goes back and forth from Cayo La Vista, literally just fills up the majority of their bilge with fresh water. Yeah, but it's really rusty down there. So by the, they literally and oily. Just, yeah, just put our tank in there and then gave it back to us. And I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> so we that, used that to shower. Yeah, that was pretty nasty, was but at least nasty. it was water. Um, so we didn't drink that, um, but as, but we did fill up and drink the water at Los Moros, which is the last stop um, between from going to Cuba to Isla Mujeres, um, and we <laughs> drank it and we didn't get sick and it didn't taste too bad. And then the water here in Isla Mujeres tastes pretty disgusting, but it's not going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and so most of the like, uh, I can't speak for every developing country in the world, but Cuba and Mexico. I think you've got two major problems, right? The water is really hard. Like there's a lot of minerals in the water and that can have health effects for you over time. Yeah. And then the other problem is it getting mixed up with sewage. Um, and so we the, the two stages that we use, which is filtration, we put it through a 0.5 micron carbon filter um, to, to get it into the boat. And then once it's in the boat, we use um, a little bit of chlorine. And if you want to know how much chlorine to use, the World Health Organization actually has a parts per million like recommended uh, amount of chlorine. And then you can just use that parts per million and figure out how many drops that is. For I've actually found each of our tanks are about 15 gallons. And for each tank, we use one cup 
full or cap full of the chlorine because that's almost exactly right. This is an interesting question. Mahala Lewis says, is it possible to reuse gray water for black water, i.e. flush toilets with sink water, etc.? Is that something that's possible on smaller sailboats? Dang, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, that'd be it's, so cool. It's totally possible. You would just have to do some really interesting plumbing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you totally... Although... We don't. We use uh, salt water to flush our toilet. Yeah, which comes at at a cost because generally the areas that get really backed up with salt deposits are just after the Joker valve, where like literally it's the valve that keeps your ship from coming back. <laughs> you want it to go one direction, and the Joker valve is what allows that to happen. And right after that Joker valve, like. I've had so many toilets where I've had to like scrape away salt deposits that had literally formed in the shape of that joker valve. Um, what we do to mitigate that is probably once or twice a week we, we pour a bunch of vinegar into the toilet mm -hmm. and let that vinegar and then kind of flush it and let it sit in the system and that keeps too much salt from building up. Yeah. Um, you want to you wanna move on? <laughs> yeah, let's from... move on from, so, pretty much bang through all the drinking waters issues. Uh, let's talk about storage. Um, although, I don't know how interesting that is. We could hop over to living space. Maybe that's more interesting. What do you think? Because we have about 15 minutes left. Real quick, Jason, yeah. my brother, just hopped on. Oh, hey, Jason. What's up, Jason? How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Um... But um, <laughs> that's, I like that. No, that's a, that's a good point, Jason. We'll definitely we'll definitely look into we're 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 definitely looking into getting a drone at some point. Absolutely. Um, okay, sorry. So we are where most of its tools beyond the sphere. Well, I was saying. Oh. Well, let me just ask you a question. We can talk about storage, or we can uh, move on to hold on um, living space because we only have 15 minutes left. We can go. We can run how... a little late. Okay. Let's just run a little late. Okay. We are a little bit behind, guys hang with us seems like everyone's having a good time please be vocal and let us know if you want us to hurry this bad boy up